Good afternoon. We are excited to be back. We have another wonderful, exciting topic for you today here on Make It Plain. If this is your first time here with us, we would like to extend a special welcome to you and let you know that we are streaming on other platforms, X, uh, Rumble, and you can see the others in the description box below. As well, you can listen to this podcast on Google, Spotify, on Google, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and go in the description box on YouTube. You can find all the links. Go ahead and share this content because for those of you who are returning, you already know it's going to be good, and we are definitely going to make it plain. I want to introduce to you all my co-host, Andrew Richard, and we're excited to to get right to it today. We're going to... Right. We have a, a lot to really get into and a lot to unpack. We, we don't want to hold back any punches today. No. Right? Not at all. So today we're talking about Mark Driscoll. He is a mega church pastor, and he has recently gone viral because there was a Stronger Men's Conference in Springfield, Missouri, which he attended as one of the speakers. Uh, this is hosted by James River Church, and the pastor of that church there is Pastor John Lindell. And as Mark Driscoll was there, he was rebuking what he called the Jezebel spirit. There was a man who swallowed a sword and then climbed a pole in the midst of the congregation. So we're going to show you that today if you are not already aware of those clips. So let's play that first clip uh, to show you what sparked the controversy why Mark Driscoll has gone viral. Okay, hmm. so that's the clip of the gentleman. Now, we're going to play some more clips. We're going to hear from Mark Driscoll in just a second. But before we get into that, we want to set the context. This is a men's conference. So men are coming from, I would imagine, all across the United States. Who knows? Even some from other countries, potentially, uh, to this large gathering, this, this stadium where it can hold hundreds, if not thousands of people. And they're there as men to learn more about how to be a better father how to be a better man in society, how to be a better husband, and all of these things. Because we understand from Scripture that men are the backbone of society, yep. and we need strong men. So they go to this conference, and they see this taking place as one of the opening acts. Yep. Now I want to ask you, if you saw this, would you stay, would you remain in that congregation? Because is, is this giving you what you need? Does this satisfy the reason why you came to the con conference I mean, in the first place? I, I want to say this. I mean, we have to remember that, again, we're not just highlighting these events just to talk about them for the sake of talking about them. We, there's an end goal in we're, which we're going to meet as we discuss further along in this podcast here. We're going to make That's it correct. plain, dig deep, mm -hmm. right? So all this, what's going on, is a simply surface. Correct. When we start getting into the nitty-gritty uh, and examining our own selves and seeing how this applies to even our own church, correct. we're going to see how many people again, have been standing for God or not standing for God, but yeah. that's neither here or there. Because there is a difference between a reactionary video. Correct. You play the video, you say, folks, our subscribers, just give us your thoughts in the, the comment comments. section. Mm -hmm. Right. We are doing an in-depth analysis right. with the proper application. Correct, exactly. Um, and again, just on your point, this, this convocation or this convention was is supposed to be spiritual Christian in nature. But again, this was the opening act. And since everybody's talking about it, we want to insert our voice into this conversation because there are some in issues that transpired that many people missed. Correct. And that's why we're, that's why mm -hmm. we're having this discussion today. Correct. I want to just start off by quoting this scripture from Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, why should ye be stricken anymore? Mm -hmm. This is the question being asked. Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, mm -hmm. and the whole heart is faint. So my question is, since the head represents the leaders, Correct. how did they allow this to transpire? Correct. How did they allow this to bypass under the radar, mm -hmm. to be the opening act for a Christian convocation for men? Mm -hmm. Not just simply for families, Correct. but for men, right? That's my question. But as we go along... I'm going to unpack this very same principle here. I don't want to say too much more. Yeah. So hold on. So to answer your question, what would uh, we have done? 
if we were there at this meeting and this was the opening act. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Driscoll addressed this issue mm -hmm. not the same day. I guess he was to be the keynote speaker on another day right. afterward. Right. Mm -hmm. I would not have waited mm -hmm. for a day after to address this publicly. And uh, again, you see a man. Now, it's one thing if that's what he does for a career. Mm -hmm. Who invited him? Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. And number two, you're talking about calling this a men's conference when you have a man who is half naked mm -hmm. without yeah. shirt. What, 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 what spirit is this? Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to dig into this yep. lest we simply give a reactionary video and not really make the right applications for us in the last days. That's right. Yeah, because off the bat, this has nothing to do with God. And then if this is supposed to be a conference, if it's supposed to be spiritual, why is his shirt off in the conference? It doesn't matter if it's all men. What message is that sending, especially him being in the front in a position of teaching, in a position of, of leading, where all the eyes are on him at that moment? Right. Yeah. Again, to your point, who invited him? Because yeah. in his mind, he could just be simply saying, I'm doing a job. But nonetheless, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to what Mark Driscoll said now when he addressed this issue. I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. All right, so we're going to let him finish in just a moment, but let's, yeah. let's talk about this before we, we play what happened to him at the end because he mentions it's a Jezebel spirit. Now, I'm going to get right into that because right on the surface, if this was a woman doing this in this male congregation, there would be a great outcry. Correct. Because they would be like, this is bringing a strip club to a male conference where they're trying to grow spiritually. Correct. But because it's a, a, a male, some people didn't see a problem with it until Mark Driscoll addressed it. And of course, because of his clip, it went viral. Correct. Because you notice as you were speaking, there was some applause and agreement in the crowd. Go mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So either way, it's still wrong because it has nothing to do with God. But I like how he mentioned the Jezebel spirit because in the Bible, it shows us clearly what the Jezebel spirit is and what it does. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20, notice what it says. It says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach uh -huh. and to seduce. Notice that word. To seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Yes, sir. What if there is a man in that congregation at the moment who was struggling with the sins of the LGBT community? Mm -hmm. Right. And and he and he's coming there to get victory. Mm -hmm. He might be enticed by that. So nail it. So that means if it was a woman, there would be an outcry. But because it's a man, everybody was silent mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. But what about homosexuality? Correct. Correct. Right. A ex Absolutely. Exactly. But even even still, so that's that's one side, the homosexuality. But as a man doing that in a spiritual context is still seduction. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with God? Let's talk about Jezebel again. What else was Jezebel known for? She was known for cutting off the prophets of the Lord. Mm -hmm. First Kings 18, we see there that Obadiah had to hide a lot of the prophets and feed them in a cave. So why were they prophets hiding? Notice this. They were hiding because they were fearful for their lives. So in other words, Jezebel did a good job of removing God's word from the people. Mm -hmm. And at this conference, the word of God was being hidden behind entertainment, gimmicks. 
you know, it's 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 very likely. I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. I doubt that there was much substance in that conference, mm-hmm. much substance to really help men get victory over sin. Why? Because the gimmicks are covering it, just All like right. Jezebel. And, and you know what? He's you, on fire today. He is. He is. Let's I was let, let him run that mic, brother. Let that's him it. run that mic. And you know what's interesting is that, to your point, that's very true. Because usually, when they, what they say is the opening act or the opening presentation sets the precedence mm-hmm. for the remainder of the meeting. You know, meeting and what have you. So if you come out strong, it's going to pick up steam throughout. Mm-hmm. And so the opening act was a a man mm-hmm. on a pole, shirt off, naked, naked. Mm. So again, to your point, I also believe that there was not much substance, if any, at this convocation. And again, Mm -hmm. these things, again, we're highlighting because, again, the world is talking about it. Mm -hmm. But what is happening even in our own churches? We're going to get into that Mm -hmm. further along. I don't want to go too far in that, but I want people to understand that we're not simply talking about stuff that's on the surface, what everyone else is talking about. But we have to come home and examine Mm -hmm. ourselves. And these same things are happening in our churches. The same Jezebel spirit. In the churches we attend, as yeah. well as even in the other Protestant and non-Protestant uh, churches that there are. That's right. And as you continue looking at the Jezebel spirit, she was promoting false worship. Mm-hmm. She had the prophets of Baal. That's right. And they were worshiping false gods, mm-hmm. false systems of worship. That's what's going on at this conference. They're teaching the men that th- it is okay to mix this type of paganism, this mm-hmm. type of worldliness in the church and call it worship, right. a men's conference. Yeah, that's truth and error. Yeah. Second Kings mm-hmm. 23, mm-hmm. verse 5, it mentions Baal worship, mm-hmm. which leads to nature worship, mm-hmm. the sun, the moon, the stars, Baal worship, sun, the worship. Verse 7 mentions sodomy, mm-hmm. sodomites. Mm-hmm. So we see how the sun, the worship was linked to sodomy. Mm-hmm. When you see a man naked like this mm-hmm. in a church setting, it's nothing but a repetition of what we have seen in the past. Mm. Right, right. And we have to rebuke right. it and call people out. Right. However, what if these folks leave Babylon and come to our churches mm. and see the nakedness? Same nakedness. Right. The nakedness. Mm-hmm. Because remember, a man taking off his whole shirt, it's one thing. But what if men in the churches wear their shirts and on they the, unbutton the top right, right. and the chest is showing? Mm-hmm. That's how many of them come to church. That's right. right. Right, mm-hmm. right. Think about it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's even more seductive because it, it, it causes the mind to imagine things. You can't see the full thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Correct. The yeah. whole thing is not exposed, so you're like, hmm. Right. And, and it causes you to imagine even more. It leaves the mind down to the gutter, exactly. And if you notice, the men now are trying to fight with the woman to see who is more, pardon me, who is more sexy, mm-hmm. who is more attractive. Mm-hmm. I've never seen seductive. this in my life. Mm-hmm. Men are in tight pants. Yeah to show off curves. Mm-hmm. This is an abomination. Mm-hmm. There's even ads for that. Certain mm-hmm. pants that, that even, highlight. Brother, even, I'm even not talking figure. about those in the world. Even, <laughs> I'm speaking about those in the church. Right. Even tighter than some of the women. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So men, as we will see, they're running from these, these things in Babylon. What will they see when they come to our local churches? Mm-hmm. Right. That's why we have to make it plain. Correct. So the, the conference here is an irony because it should have been and probably was promoted as a conference to upbuild men in some form. Mm-hmm. But yet we see even the opening act is a feminizing men. Right. That's right. And the point is, okay, let's say that this is this guy's lifestyle, how he makes his bread and butter. The point is it doesn't belong in the church. Mm-hmm. That's the point we're trying to make. Right. If you do that in a circus, you do that wherever you want. That's your profession. But this should not be done in the church. Circus. Right. Circus. As yeah. you said, circus. Mm-hmm. What does the circus and the church have in common? Nothing but that both names begin with the letter C. Mm -hmm. Circus and church. They have nothing in common. What he did belongs in the circus. This is the church of the living God. I'm not saying that is the church of the living God, but we have the church of the living God. Correct. Now let's see what happened to Mark Driscoll as we transition. As he was trying to get into more of his talk, he was interrupted by John Lindell, the leading pastor. Mm -hmm. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. You're done. You're finished now. So there's that clip right there. You see he's trying to get into it, but then John Lindell is screaming out from the audience, John, you're out of line. John, you are done. Right. And then Mark Driscoll responds, all right. 
pastor, I'll receive that. And mm-hmm. he and he humbly walks away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my mind goes my mind goes to the statement which we quote very often from volume three, Testimonies, page two eighty. Mm. If God abhors one sin above another, mm-hmm. of which his people are guilty, it is doing nothing in case of an emergency. Indifference and neutrality in a religious crisis is regarded regarded of God as a grievous crime and equal to the very worst type of hostility against God. And so what the main pastor, John Lindell, was basically setting up was this, I want to say, I want to say false principle of neutrality among among. That, the, that, that convention because if because again later on we're going to see that he actually labels John, um, labels Mark as John the Baptist mm-hmm. right he labels him as John the Baptist yet, yet in the same breath he's what, what did John the Baptist preach truth yeah rebuke sin rebuke sin and that's exactly what Mark is doing right here so if he believes that he has the spirit of John the Baptist why is he taking him down from speaking the truth mm. right and so we're, very, we're seeing this right here, this idea of neutrality, this idea of indifference among leadership. Mm. And it goes back to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 5. Why is the church in the condition that, is it, that it is in? Because of the leadership. Yeah. The only way these things can happen and keep happening is because it's allowed by leadership. Correct. And an interesting um, potent point that I want to drive home right now is from Acts chapter 7. Because a similar scene took place in the, old, the New Testament, rather. And it will take place and is taking place even now in these last days where Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And he was giving to the Jews their last message before probation closed upon them as an entire people. And as he's going down the timeline and showing them how much God had blessed them and how many times they had failed and rejected Christ, it came to such a point that in verse 57 of Acts 7, it says, Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears Mm -hmm. and ran upon him with one accord. Mm. As Mark Driscoll is getting into the crux of his matter, calling out the sin that took place at this conference, which he's speaking at, the pastor John Lindell then begins begins to stop his ears. All right, Mark, you're out of line. That's it. You're done. Get out of here. And runs up on the stage in one accord. What is he what was he trying to do? To stifle the voice of truth, to stifle the voice of rebuke. And so why did John Lindell do this? And why do many leaders in churches do this today when some of their members, because we hear stories, many members, they go to their local pastors and they see some of the apostasies taking place and they might speak out, let's say in a Sabbath school session or even go to the minister or the elders privately and speak and say, hey, look, this is wrong. And yet they don't receive any any support or assistance from leadership with the change. So why do the leaders allow it? It's because the leaders themselves don't want to change and they don't want to admit that they're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why John Lindell ran up there. Yeah. 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 For, for, for Mark to rebuke him in that moment was an embarrassment for him because it's going to come back around. I'm the pastor. I'm probably the one who invited and allowed Mm -hmm. uh, this man, Alex Magala to come and, and do this performance. I don't want to look like I'm in the wrong. No, we got to stop this, just like the Jews. Mm. Stop the voice of rebuke. And that's what's going on in churches today. Yeah, that's true. I want, I want, I want, that, I want us to play that clip of him go, running up on the stage. Yep. That's the next one. That's the next step. Let's, go, go, let's roll it. Let's roll it. If Mark wanted to say that, he should have said it to me first. Oh, 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 oh. I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If he wanted to say it, he could say it to me. You may not agree with me. You may not agree with him. But we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to him. Mm. So basically he says, hey, listen, the way Mark, the way Mark did it was all wrong. He should have came to me first. Mm-hmm. He quoted Matthew chapter 18. Right? We know Matthew 18, if you have ought with your brother, go to your brother. But let me ask this question. Was what happened and transpired at this convention, was it something private? No. It was public. Correct. Not only pu- I mean, it was also streamed as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Public for all to see. So does the principle of Matthew 18 apply in this context? It does not. It does not. What principle applies? You, you, you were, you were, we were talking about this earlier on, right? 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 20. What does that say? 
them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. So open apostasy, open sin requires open and public rebuke. Correct. So John Lindell is actually out of line and out of scripture. Mm -hmm. what, John, what Mark was doing was actually correct. He saw something that was public and protested publicly about it. That's the principle that, should have, that, that, that was followed. But again, again, these pastors here, as you were mentioning, that because of pride, mm -hmm. because of pride, they don't want to concede that what they did was wrong. How could you as a leader, as a pastor, not see and not know that that was incorrect, that that was wrong to do? Mm. Mm? And the same is happening in our churches today. Yeah. The, I mean, there's so many gimmicks that, that so many forms of entertainment that pastors bring in just to keep the people's attention. That's true. I, I mean, and, and let me say this also, Jared, is that many times when we as God's people, when we're standing for truth, do we not hear the very same sentiment? When we see op open apostasy in our churches nowadays and we stand up and say, that is wrong. That should not be promulgated or promoted in our churches. Those online, you can probably agree and see this as well, that it's very, very open. But when we stand up, what do people shout at us? Matthew, Matthew 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Did you call him? Did you call the brother mm -hmm. and speak to him privately mm -hmm. on his open public sin? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. Because open sin requires open rebuke. Correct. Right? That's the principle that must be followed. Because as, the, as people are seeing these things publicly, they are thinking, okay, this is church. Correct. This is all right. But where is the, where is the voice of stern, stern rebuke? Now, now, I want to say something on this point because John Lindell said that they had a 30-minute conversation prior mm -hmm. and nothing was said of that sort. Now, Mark Driscoll very well could have spoken to the pastor, John Lindell, about this before and got the, the, the yay or the nay, as, as we will see in, a, in, a, in another clip. Mm -hmm. When Mark apologizes, he's going to say, well, you know, I could have spoken about it before and got the yay or the nay. But I want to put this point out there. While that wouldn't have been a bad idea, I believe God allowed this to happen on purpose because it is highly likely that if Mark Driscoll had spoken about what he was going to talk about um, to the audience with John Lindell prior, John mm -hmm. Lindell would have said, no, don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because John Lindell is the head pastor. He's obviously in support of what took place. Correct. Right. And so this whole scenario that took place, it, God allowed it to teach us a lesson mm -hmm. that open sins have to be openly rebuked, mm -hmm. but also... This stands as a warning now for all those men that were in the congregation and other churches as well. What are you allowing in your churches? What are you calling holy that is unholy? What are you calling clean that is unclean? Mm -hmm. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 and 21, God says not to call what is clean or unclean clean and vice versa. We have to make a clear distinction. So I believe it's God's providence that this all took place how it did so that we could examine ourselves mm -hmm. and see, are we trying to sanctify worldly things, worldly means, so that we can get more converts in the church? Mm -hmm. And as you can hear as well, many of the men at this point in the crowd, they're booing John Lindell as if they are in support of Mark Driscoll and his rebuke. But the funny part is, as we're going to see, when they make up, when they apologize, it's as if the men change their mind. It's as if the men now are in agreement with just the fact that they're talking again and they're on one accord. Yeah. It's as if their former convictions of right versus wrong have gone away. Right. It, it, that, that's very interesting. Uh, Andrew, you were talking about this earlier on as well, is that the people that were booing while Linda was speaking, mm -hmm. was in a, they, were in, they were in agreement when Mark was speaking. Correct. But when Linda came up, they started booing as if they were agreeing with the truth that was being presented. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Well, I mean, it's interesting that it took Mark Driscoll to protest. Mm -hmm. And as he did, those who were seated began to be in support of what he was saying. Correct, yeah. But yeah. why did it take Mark Driscoll mm -hmm. the day after, the second day? I don't know when Mark Driscoll spoke, mm -hmm. but we know the apostasy was an opening act. Day one, correct. Yeah. Day one. Mm-hmm. So why did those people in the pews, in the cheers, not say something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what I want to address right now. Because in our churches, people would sit in churches. 
mm. and they know what the pastor, the mm. elders are promoting mm -hmm. are against scripture and they sit right there and say nothing. Mm. But let mm. somebody else stand up mm. and say that is wrong, that's apostasy. Mm -hmm. Maybe on ecumenism, dress reform, health reform, whatever. Mm -hmm. That is wrong, it's unbiblical. Right. Two reactions. Number one, some will say, huh, you're on your own. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, but, I'm not, gonna but <laughs> I'm not going to put my name and myself line. out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You alone stand the heat, right. not me. Mm -hmm. Or others will say, well, since someone had the boldness to stand up and protest, I'm going to be in support. I'm ready now. Some people are simply waiting for a leader to speak up. Speak up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once they see someone who's willing to speak up, they will support. Mm -hmm. Because some people are not leaders. Right. Yeah. Right. Not leaders. Right. So I'll pass it back on to you both because you're on fire. I'm going to say this. These men who were actually in the chairs sitting there and they were in support of, of Mark Driscoll, what they're saying is we came here for a spiritual convocation, mm -hmm. a spiritual convention, That's right. stronger men, mm -hmm. spiritual substance is what we want. Mm -hmm. Not gimmicks, mm -hmm. not circus. Not entertainment. So it's evident that, that those in Babylon, they want spiritual substance. That's right. Watch this now. We, in our community, SDA, what if we are trying to use the same circus, same method. the same entertainment, the same frivolity mm -hmm. in our churches saying, we must do this so we can win the men from Babylon. Souls. This is exhibit A. Mm -hmm. The men from Babylon don't want that. Mm -hmm. Am I saying every? No, but exhibit A. That's right. A large group, mega church, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. We want Bible. We want spiritual substance. substance. We want truth. Do you think they will come to our local churches? Mm -hmm. Do you think they will come to our camp meetings? Mercy. Camp meetings, hold on. Naked man, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember recently at a camp meeting in Texas? Mm hmm. Yes. SDA, SDA yes. and they brought in the yeah, worldly, worldly choir. That's right. And the actual lead choir leader was gyrating as if he's a woman mm -hmm. on the pulpit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As if you're actually at a midnight uh, oh, red yeah. light club. Oh mm -hmm. boy. Pole dancers. Red, light, red light district. It's my, it's oh, my point now. Right. They right. don't want that in our churches. No, no. But we say that's how we're going to win them. Mm. They're not coming in. And that's why we're told in volume six. Mm -hmm. Yep. Page 370. Does not now. God doth not now work mm -mm. to bring many in the truth, many in our churches. Why? Because of the backslidden condition of what's happening in our churches. Mm. So we have to what now? Make, Make it, it plain. plain. Mm. God does not condone mm. and commend such abominations in our churches. Mm. Exhibit A. This is not a reactionary video. No. We're getting no. to the, the, the crux of the matter. Right. We're bringing it home. Yeah. And that's exactly what we need. So as we transition to this next clip, we're going to see John Lindell as well as Mark Driscoll. This is after this whole debacle took place, and I guess they had spoken, they had made up. We're going to hear some of John Lindell's comments to start off and how what he was telling his son about Mark Driscoll, I guess, during his preaching. You want to know what John the Baptist was like? Nothing about what was said changes that. And I, Mark and I talked. We went outside where we could be alone and we could talk. And we reaffirmed our friendship. And Mark, I want you to know, you're a gift to the kingdom. You're a gift to James River. You've been a gift to Debbie and I. You've helped us in things. You've been kind to my family and to my sons. And I love you. And I, I told Mark, listen, he says, I'll do whatever you want. I said, well, if you're willing, and we can come in and talk, and we'll let him talk to you in a moment. If you're willing, I want you to speak again. I want to find out about life. <laughs> you want to know what John the Baptist was like? Okay, so that clip is done. So notice his opening words. Do you want to know what John the Baptist was like? And everyone starts cheering. So uh, John 
Lindell said that about Mark Driscoll. And the irony of it is he's calling him a John the Baptist, but yet he's not supporting the words that he said prior. Mm -hmm. Because it reminds me of the Pharisees. Do you know what the Pharisees did in the time of Christ? They spoke well of the, of the, the, the prophets before. They spoke well of them, but yet, notice what the Bible says in Matthew 23 and verse 20. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and mm -hmm. Pharisees, hypocrites, mm -hmm. because ye build, build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And, said, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have been partakers with them. We would not. Thank you. Very important. We would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Notice what Jesus says. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Let's make that plain because yes, that sir. went over some of your heads. So Jesus says that the Pharisees, they praised the prophets that had gone on before. They praised the Moseses. They praised Elijah. They praised Elisha. They praised Jeremiah. All of these guys. But Jesus says, if you were in their day, you would have killed them. Mm -hmm. You would have stoned them. What is John Lindell doing here in this clip? He's praising John the Baptist. He says, look, this guy is a John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is saying to him, if you were in John the Baptist's day and you heard John the Baptist speaking out against Herod, calling him uh, a, a fox and an adulterer for what he had done with Herodias, who was not his wife, you also would have been guilty of cutting off John the Baptist's head. Mm. And that's exactly what he's doing here. He's speaking with a forked tongue to gain the approval of the audience. Mm -hmm. So they went back, they made up, they, they reaffirmed their, their friendship. Not, nothing's wrong with that. But the point is, we never heard an apology from John Lindell Correct. about bringing in Alex Magala, the sword-swallowing pole climber. Right. Naked man. Naked man. Never heard it. Right. right. So this was an act to gain back the audience to, to, mm -hmm. to try and show now a false sense of unity. Mm -hmm. And this is the type of unity that Christian, many Christian churches and, and believers want to have. The so-called John 17 type of unity. Mm -hmm. But really what this unity is, I'll tell you right now, it is let us unite on what we agree on but let us put aside the doctrines that we disagree on. Let us silence the voice of rebuke, and mm -hmm. let's just agree on Christ. Let's just right. agree on we're brothers in Christ. Hey, I love you. I love your kids. This and that. They're exchanging all these good things. That's fine if they're friends. That's fine. Be friends. You can disagree and still be friends. But the point is, where was the apology from John Lindell mm -hmm. for his sin? And, you know, this is, this is a part of the ecumenism movement here not only among Sunday keepers, but even among our people. Because what that, as you stated, let's put aside our differences and come together on a common good, right? And that's just reconciliation. Mm -hmm. But no, let's not address the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. but let's just address, let's just reconcile mm -hmm. to, to move forward, right? And that's happening among our churches today. It's this idea of let's put aside our distinctive doctrines in order that we can come together, mm -hmm. us inviting Sunday, Sunday, Sunday Keeper to come and preach, teach, and sing to us. Let's unite on that platform in order to win souls. But let's not address the elephant in the room. And that is, these Sunday Keepers, they keep Sunday, right? And we're not condemning them. They're just simply worshiping on the wrong day, either willfully or unwillfully. That's why we need to educate them. But in order for us to unite with them, we are putting aside our distinctive doctrines, Right? And that's leading us down a path, which we're seeing today in our churches, Correct. where anything goes. Correct. Right? This may not even be surprising or shocking to some people who are watching us right now and saying, listen, that goes on to, that's going on in my church right now. Correct. Mm. Right? But he mentioned John the Baptist. Now, question, did John the Baptist apologize mm. for rebuking no. Herod? Did he say, oh, I'm sorry, Herod. No. I, I didn't mean it that way. Mm. He's no John the Baptist. He's, he, Correct. he's sitting down apologizing for, for stating the truth. Mm. Right? So he's going against his own conscience, mm -hmm. which again is he's going against the Holy Spirit of God. Correct. Because John the Baptist did not compromise. God, John the Baptist made it plain, and we are told in inspiration that we have to bear a more pointed testimony than John the Baptist. So if if we are compromising now, if we as God's people are compromising now, when the crisis hits and we have to address these individuals, how will we respond and how will we Correct. react to them? So basically, 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You don't, you don't, Finish up. No, I mean, that, that was it. So we're seeing a motion picture here. Because how many of us in the last days, we're told in the book, Great Controversy, that now when we are presenting the truth, we are filled with exuberance, joy, elation, mm -hmm. power to present the message. Right. But when the powers that be confront us, many of us are going to say, if we had known, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The persecution that would arise because of preaching this truth, yeah. then we would have kept our peace. We right. would have been silent. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing it right here. That's it. But God's people now are going to flee to the rock in mm. prayer mm. and say, Lord, you gave me this truth to present. Mm -hmm. How dear I can. And they will speak even more boldly yep. under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Number one. Number two. We can also recall what happened in the days of the reformers. Yes, yes. John with Huss. Uh, John Huss. Yes, another John. And Jerome. Mm -hmm. John again, mm -hmm. John, John, mm -hmm. right? And John, John Huss and Jerome. Jerome John right. Huss did not recant. Mm -hmm. Even when he was actually facing the stake That's right. to be burnt with faggots mm -hmm. and fire, mm -hmm. he still remained faithful. That's right. But not Jerome. At first, he recanted. Mm. Yeah. That's not the spirit of John the Baptist. He apologized. It's not. We have to be faithful. Now look at that picture again. L let's put that on the screen because you you both on fire here. Let's get that video, just the picture on the screen, right? Look at the background image. Mm -hmm. That's a motorcycle, right? Right. And at this so-called uh, Stronger Men conference, yeah. they were talking about using the um, monster trucks monster truck. and so on and so forth. Yeah. And again, because monster trucks look manly, masculine, and grow, you know, big and powerful. Powerful, yeah. Let's bring that into the church setting to spell and illustrate that we want strong men. Mm -hmm. Do you know the men in the pews sat there? They were also saying, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. We don't want theatrics. We don't want drama. Give us substance, spiritual that's, that's, substance. That's right. Do you recall several months ago in our church community mm -hmm. with the Pathfinders? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Rings the bell now. Mm -hmm. What yeah. did they bring in among, among, among the Pathfinders? Mm. The same uh, um, motorcycles, motorcycles and, and jumping, jumping over cliffs yep. and making mounts the and riding over these mounts. The theatrics. Yes. The theatrics. Yep. The so we're seeing the same thing in our churches. Mm -hmm. It's not a reaction or a video we're doing here. Right. Oh. And it shows you who, after whom we're patterning. Talk mm -hmm. to us. After whom we're patterning. We are looking at the Sunday keeping churches and trying to use their methods to bring into our churches to get converts. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at their churches, we say, oh, well, they have thousands of people. The numbers. Mega churches. Yeah. And, and watch this. A church may have hundreds, if not thousands of people but that does not mean that they're all converted. Mm. So just because a church has a lot of people does not mean the spirit of God is there. No. Because the Bible shows us clearly in the last days, those who will be saved will be a remnant. That's right. So the majority of people, that should not dictate if you should be in that congregation or not. That's true. Or if you should even pattern the, uh, the methods of these other churches to bring mm. into yours. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a numbers game. It's more of genuine souls and conversion. Mm -hmm. Case in point, when you look at the ministry of Christ just before his crucifixion, on Sunday, when he came in riding on that donkey, was there a majority of people mm -hmm. that were crying, Hosanna, mm -hmm. yes to Jesus, right? Blessed Jesus, be the king. Blessed be the king. Jesus is king, mm -hmm. right? And then on Friday, the very same multitude, numbers of people were the same ones crying, crucify him. Mm -hmm. So again, to your, to your point, just because stadiums are filled with individuals does not mean that each one is connected is converted and so that's where we have the the misrepresentation of evangelism as a church as a denomination we are using trying to use i won't even say sunday i would say worldly methods to try to win and and convert souls to christ mm -hmm. but we must use christ's methods and did christ ever apologize for telling the truth mm. did he ever compromise on any principle at all he did not he, he did not and this is, again, this is, the, this is the misconception we have is bringing in the theatrics, thinking that this is going to keep the young people. All it does is give them an emotional high. But when they finish that service, Preach. they go back to being uh, discouraged, Preach. depressed, 
anxiety, suicidal, right? The emotional high does not solve the spiritual death and spiritual deadness that, they, that they're receiving, that they're having in their souls. Yes, so sir. what must they have? Mm. What must they receive when they come mm. to our churches? Mm. They, was, they must receive the, the, the spiritual food of Christ. They must, receive the, they must receive the word without any watering down, the mm. love of Christ through his word, mm. right? Did John the Baptist ever mince his words? Mm. He called a spade a spade. Sin, sin. But he did it with love because he wanted to see, he wanted people to truly be converted. That's it. Do you have a, do you have, do, the, do these men have a love for souls? Does John Lindell have a love for souls? On that point, uh, on that point, I believe we can see the providence of God in this. You know, as a people, our people, our people, as a people, I don't believe that we're actively engaged in the work God has called us to do. I mean, to warn and to bring these folks from Babylon into his uh, yeah. end time movement. Definitely, I don't believe we're doing what we should be doing. Definitely not in the capacity. Number one. Number two, so as it were, God is exposing Babylon for what it really is. Mm -hmm. Watch this. In chapter 18 of Revelation, Babylon, verse two, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, mm -hmm. and is become the habitation of what? Devils. Devils. The hold of every foul spirit. spirit. The cage of every unclean and hateful mm -hmm. bird. Verse 4, come out of her, my people. Mm -hmm. I believe now, some of these men, a large number of these men, given that picture, Mr. Producer, a large number of those men sitting on the floor. That's, the just, floor. One, that's just one side. Yes, yeah, the floor, mm -hmm. right? And the, the platform is there. I'm wondering if the Holy Spirit now is saying, that's why you can trust leadership. Mm -hmm. Who sanctioned this? Mm -hmm. To my point, mm -hmm. so God is exposing Babylon, exposing the leadership. Mm -hmm. Who sanctioned this? So how can we trust these men anymore? Mm -hmm. And He did not apologize. Yes. It's nowhere in the clips. Mm -hmm. Did not didn't didn't apologize. So God is saying now, SDA, cast your net. Cast your net. Yes, yes, reach it. I'm going to bring the fishes in. Cast the net mm -hmm. because they're looking for something better. Yes. The, very the woman at the well, mm -hmm. looking for something better. Listen, I just come to Jacob's well because that's all I know. Men went to that conference, that's all they know. Mm -hmm. That's all they have access to. Mm -hmm. These men conferences. I wonder, should we be having also men men's, conf men's conferences? Mm. Again, not to separate men from women and children. You no, get the point, right? But, but there was a school of the prophets. That's right. You see any woman? Mm -mm. In the schools of the prophets in the Bible, mm -mm. Samuel, Elijah, and Elisha. Yeah. These were all young men. That's right. That's right. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. That's right. To give to the nation men who are strong spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wrong with having men's conference. It's in the Bible. That's right. That's right. And when Saul, who was unconverted, mm -hmm. trying to slay David, when he went up to that mount, that church, that convention, mm -hmm. and saw Samuel and the sons of the prophets, even Saul began to prophesy. Mm. Mm. Mercy. So much so, the men in the conference said, is Saul oh, among God, the prophets? The prophets. Mercy. Yep. Mm. That's how spiritual the mm. atmosphere was. Yes. In yes. the schools of the prophets, mm -hmm. men's conferences, That's right. young men, older men, Stronger fathers, spiritual husbands, strong men in the community, mm -hmm. in the churches. Right. We don't have that. They're looking for such things. Where is our net? Right. That's and right. that's why we may need to launch a spiritual men's conference mm -hmm. here at Save to Serve. Uh, yeah. And, and we see the necessity of training men to be men in society. Yep. Because look, at, look how many men went to this. Bec that tells us there's a need for this. People would not go to something that there is no need of. Mm -hmm. Right. So to your point, those online, stay tuned. That takes me to my point in education, page 57. This goes perfectly with what you stated. The greatest want mm -hmm. of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their inmost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name and not apologize for it. Mm -hmm. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needles to pull. Men who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. Mark should have stood for the right, irregardless of consequences. That's the kind of man God is looking for. Mm -hmm. Irregardless right. of consequences. Somebody paged him. 
you have to go back and recant. Mm. Somebody page them. Yeah. You know, if you look at where these, because somebody is going to retort and say, but we already have men's conferences and conventions in our churches. Do you know that Elijah, Elisha, they had three schools? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. And three they were in a particular location. location. That's right. To rival the so-called schools okay. in Israel who were in apostasy, number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And to rival the schools that were in the heathen nations. Nation, correct. They Jericho, yeah. Gilgal, Bethel. If you look at where Jericho, Jericho? Mm -hmm. yeah. What was happening in Jericho? Jericho was known as the city of harlots. Mm -hmm. right. Where was Rahab? In Jericho. Right in there. In Jericho. Mm -hmm. Babylon harlots. Mm -hmm. To my point now. Yeah. So where are our nets to bring in these fishes? Mm -hmm. Good question. Great God question. exposing Babylon. That's right. Let's get ready, friends. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We have to put it right. Exactly. To your point. To counter the evil that's in the world. Let's go to the next clip here where they're continuing their apology. And we're going to hear more from Mark as he goes into his apology. I honor, respect, and love and admire you as the father of this house. This is the greatest men's event, I believe, in the country right now. It's stayed here for a long time. And I, I want to thank you for having such a great heart for men. And I want to thank you that it starts with your sons. And your sons are great men. I love you and I love your sons. And in, when I was teaching, I just kept seeing them. Maybe it was the Lord and maybe it's just me and I'm peculiar. Um, no, 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 no. We're not going to do division. What we're going to do is we're going to try and model how brothers can work together. So notice he says, uh, Mark was saying, you know, maybe it was just him or no, maybe it was the Lord speaking to him or maybe it was just him um, or maybe he's just peculiar. Uh, but he didn't plan to say that. And he said it in the, in the conference. And then a man screams out and says, Mark. You're right. He's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do division here. And then he continues with the other words that became a little bit inaudible. So what you see here is that Mark is backtracking on the words that he said. It's as if he's not sure anymore whether he was speaking out of line or if God was speaking to him. And now you hear the voice from a man in the audience. Mark, you're right. We agree with you. We believe it was wrong. No, we're not going to do division. So what did Mark do? Laid down the voice of rebuke to unite. Mm -hmm. And I want to read a very potent statement for you right now from Great Controversy, which is going to set the tone because as believers, all of us are going to have to take a stand for Christ. And the reality is many in the world and many even in the church who profess to be Christians are not going to like it. It says here in Great Controversy, page 45, paragraph 3, mm -hmm. to secure peace and unity they were ready to make any concession consistent with fidelity to God. Speaking yes, about the persecution in the first century, those who were being persecuted for Bible beliefs, they were ready to, to, to have peace if it was consistent with fidelity to God. But it says, but they felt that even peace would be too dearly purchased at the sacrifice of principle. If unity could be secured only by the compromise of truth and righteousness, then let there be difference and even war. Mm -hmm. What did Mark say? No, 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 no. We're not going to do any division here. And he continues with his words. In so many words, he's saying, we're just going to unite. Because, mm -hmm. hey, John, you're my friend. I love your kids. You love my kids, all of that. And again, that's fine. They can be friends. But we're not talking about should they be friends or not, or should they have, no. We're talking about was uh, what took place in the conference, right or wrong. And it was wrong. And Mark backtracked on it. What did he do? Compromise to get peace. Instead of standing for the right, even to have difference, even more, even if it meant losing his friendship with John. Mm -hmm. That's what we're, we're told in inspiration, even in the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, I mean, again, we should stand for the truth, stand for the right, and wherever the the, where, wherever the chips fall, leave it with God. All we need to do, all we need to know, is that we have a a, a clear conscience that we stood for the right, right. And as you mentioned, great controversy. Remember Luther when he was brought before worm, before worms, Breach. and he was up against again the prelates, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Catholics, and he was told to listen. 
listen, brother, you have to stop preaching against the Roman Catholic Church. Stop preaching against apostasy. Stop preaching against false worship mm -hmm. and join our side. Remember, you were Catholic? Come back over the, and, and join the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. He basically silenced the protest. Mm -hmm. But what did, what did Luther say? What did, I, I can't quote it verbatim, mm -hmm. but in principle, he said, listen, I am not going to recant. Here mm -hmm. I stand. I'm making my stand with God. I irregardless, can no I can do no other. Mm -hmm. Irregardless of where the chips fall, my conscience is going to be clear. I stand for God and God alone. And God preserved his life mm -hmm. because he stood for him. And the Bible teaches that principle that those who honor God, him will God honor. Mm -hmm. So as long as we make sure that we're pleasing God, we don't have to worry about what men's, men say. Too, too, many, too much nowadays in our churches, we want to be men pleasers mm. rather than God pleasers. Mm. And what does Peter say when he stood up before the congregation? Mm. Friends and brethren, we uh, ought to obey God mm -hmm. rather than man. That's right. There's that's no, it. There's no way, way around that, man, and, and Andrew. There's no way around it. No way around it, right? And in again, GC, In GC 610, Christ's ambassadors should have nothing, nothing to, to do. do with consequences. Mm -hmm. Present the truth and leave the results with God. Yeah, and it goes back to your first question. What would we, do, what would we have done if we were sitting in that crowd and saw this? What would be our reaction? Would we have stood, sit, sat there in indifference, or would, or would we have voiced our, our, our disapproval, disapproval mm -hmm. to it? Would we have gotten up and walked out? Right. How many people are sitting today in churches today and are seeing the apostasy, but are indifferent to it? Mm -hmm. Again, there's two classes. Some people right. want to say something, but they, they don't have that leadership backbone mm -hmm. to stand up and say, listen, this is wrong, mm -hmm. but they know it's wrong. You know, my, my wife told me a story. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but she, I think it, it fits right in here. She told me a story a while ago um, at a church she used to attend back when we were living in Florida. And she said that a, a guest pastor was invited to speak at this particular mm. church, right? And on that same day, there was also a guest choir who was invited from Babylon, from, the, from Sunday Keeping Church. And this choir, they were decked out in jewelry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, this pastor, which was invited, he was not the... Uh, the lead pastor for that church, he was simply a guest, mm -hmm. came to speak and say a word. And this pastor saw that the choir was wearing jewelry and he inserted a little portion of jewelry reform or dress reform in, in his message. Mm -hmm. And he spoke out against, mm -hmm. the now this was not the main pastor of the church, Correct. this was simply a guest. Correct. But he saw what was going on. Mm -hmm. This is a Seventh-day Adventist church, but they invited a choir mm -hmm. From the, from the Sunday Keeping Church, mm -hmm. who was decked out in jewelry mm -hmm. to sing to them. And he, he openly rebuked, the, not necessarily the choir, because they, they may, never, may not have known Correct. any different. Ignorant. But he, he, he rebuked the jewelry rearing that was allowed to be promoted mm -hmm. on the platform of this SDA church. And people in that church, in that pew, mm -hmm. got up and walked out. Mm -hmm. Because they were comfortable in hearing the watered down message. Mm. They were not comfortable in hearing their cherished sins being stepped on. Mm. Now these were, these were Adventists in the choir, in, in, sorry, not in the choir, in the pews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These were members of the church. Mm -hmm. And so it shows me that when truth is being presented, people are willing to protest against the truth. Correct. But mm. when apostasy is rampant in a mm, church, correct. people are silent. And do you realize mm. when, I mean, perfect, when there are abominations going on, do you realize who is normally attacked or what is normally attacked? Mm -hmm. It's not the sins. It's the, the messenger, messenger and his message. His message. Why do they focus on the messenger with his message but not address what he's talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's easier to attack the messenger than to change. Because the issue is if the messenger is right, we have to change. Correct. We have to reconstruct our entire system. Correct. We don't want to do that. It's easier you know, as the Bible says in Luke 23, it's he was, uh, Jesus was perverting the nation, they said. So it's easier for us to do away with one man mm -hmm. um, than to have this one man take over our, our, our place nation, and see right, the nation. Right, right, You know, so we are defe go ahead, go ahead. It's, like, it's David, David hearing the words from Nathan, thou art the man. Mm. Thou art the man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Christ in Luke chapter 4 when he says, God's spirit is upon me. Preach. To preach deliverance to, to the me. captives. Yes. You all mm -hmm. are sinners. Mm -hmm. If he's right, then we have to change. Correct. And what did they do? They grabbed Christ almost to throw that him brother. headlong to his death. Mm -hmm. It's always trying to stop the messenger, messenger with the message 
without changing mm -hmm. confession and repentance. Yeah. Right. See, we are, we, are, we, are a, we are a bad type of Protestants. Mm -hmm. We're protesting against the truth as opposed to post protesting against the errors. Correct. Against the apostasy. Yeah. It's the same we thing have, here. We have, black, we have it backwards. It's why? the same thing here. Why? The same thing here. Why call ourselves Protestants then? People say, well, what, what we're doing as a ministry, they want to attack us, mm -hmm. but not attack the apostates and the apostasies Apostasies. in the church. In because the, think about this. This is why Mark Driscoll should not have recanted. Correct. Because it's not about friendship. Mm -mm. It's about the souls the that soul, Christ soul. died for. Not plain, brother. If you love the souls Christ died for, mm -hmm. you're not going to try to preserve friendship With at the, the expense of people being lost. lost. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what they did in Luke 23. Herod yep. and Pilate became friends together to unite against Christ. Christ. Yep, that's it. And, you know, and, and, and before you go, just to add to what I was saying earlier, the scriptures I mentioned there about Christ perverting the nation, that's Luke 23. Mm -hmm. And also John 11 verse 48 is where it says um, that the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation if we leave Jesus alone. Yeah, and you, can, you know why many of us are in the condition that we're in? Verse 14 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, but the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto them, unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So spiritual things are spiritually discerned. The spirituality of the church has diminished. Mm -hmm. Therefore now spiritual things cannot be discerned. They cannot know truth from error. Yeah. Because they've been feasting upon error so much, right. it has now become truth to them. Right. And so that's why it's so hard for us. I include us because again, we also have to get victory. All of us have to get victory. That's why it's so hard for us to change is that because we have been set in a mode for so long. And so we call error truth and truth error. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, notice that the recantation on Mark Driscoll's part was dangerous, more so for the fact of the souls listening. Because Correct. if you remember at the beginning when he protested, people were like, yeah, boo, get oh, down, get down, all that stuff. Yeah. And it seemed like there was a lot of people based on the noise. Mm -hmm. But then... When that one guy says to Mark, Mark, no, you're right. It's like, no, we don't want division. And everyone's cheering and applauding. Yeah. So I wonder, and this is a rhetorical question, but I just wonder how many people who were there who first booed when John Lindell came up to rebuke Mark and then cheered later when they were apologizing. In other words, it's to say how many people changed their mind on was the poll dancer correct? Or, or not, how many, you know, mm -hmm. based on yeah. what the leaders did, how right. many people dangerous. changed their mind? Dangerous, dangerous. And, and that's, what, it, that's dangerous. what we're speaking about, dangerous, the man. souls at stake, right. because many of them don't know. You know, as, as Christ says, many are like a sheep without, without a, shepherd. a shepherd. That's right. So they, they're not grounded yet in, mm -hmm. in what they believe. They're like, okay, good point, Mark. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you guys made up friends? Oh, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Correct. Right, right, right. right. So let's go to the next clip. Again, this is uh, the last clip that we have here where they're apologizing still, they're, they're finalizing that. Um, before we go there, here's an article uh, which speaks the words of what Mark was saying. If you look at the, the bottom paragraph, it says, what we're going to do is we're going to try and model how brothers can work together in what? Division. 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 Mm -hmm. I should have between sessions talked to you rather than just verbal processing on this stage. You are the father and head of this house, and you could have given me a thumbs up or thumbs, thumbs down, and I need to honor that as spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. We'll listen to that right now. I believe what I should have done since I had another session. I was thinking about it. It wasn't in my notes. I didn't intend to go there. I was up late praying for the men. I just kept seeing it, and I should have, between sessions, talked to you rather than just verbal processing on the stage and as the father and the head of the house. You could have given me a thumbs up or down, and I need to honor that as, um, as spiritual authority. And I honor your spiritual authority, I was um, And so, I apologize to you for not going that route, which would have led us from the most awkward moment in the history of any men's event. Hmm. It's like funny, a, kind of it's like funny a, a now. dumbing down, like it's a funny. watering down, like yeah. a joking, like, yeah. oh, yeah, Humor. it was all just, you mm -hmm. know. It was, just, it was just fun and games. It goes back to the statement you quoted earlier on. If, if unity could be secured by the compromise of truth and righteousness, let there be division. He said we don't want division anymore. And even war. Mm -hmm. Right? So he, he should have stood. He should have stood. We should Correct. Have stood. Hold on. So, so, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> so what if he had spoken to John Lindell right. between sessions? 
And what if John Lindell had given him a thumbs down? Mm -hmm. Don't talk about this. What would Mark Driscoll have done? Have done? Yeah. Or have said, right. Would he have kept silent or would he have still done it? So, so, so hold on now. <laughs> so if God moves upon your heart to, you. to, to, to present a message of protest for the salvation of souls, are you going to say, I'm not going to listen to the Holy Spirit, mm. but follow what man says, don't speak about this, be silent? Mm. How many examples do we have in Scripture? Mm. Hmm? When men were told not to preach, mm -hmm. Acts chapter 4, verse 18 through verse 24. Mm -hmm. Acts 5, verse 18 through 29. Speaking that, speaking they threatened the disciples. They put them in prison. Right. And then they said, did we not tell you not to speak in this man's name? Mm. A thumbs down. Thumbs down, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't speak, don't preach on these topics. Speak and on. what happened? The Spirit of God opened the, jails, the jailhouse and said, go, go and back. speak the word of truth. Same go place. Pick up where you left off. He went to the same temple. That's right. That's right. And gave the same message. Exactly. See, That's there's a statement that says in Ministry of Healing, page 502, ready for either yes. the mm -hmm. plow or the altar. Or the altar. Mm -hmm. Death before dishonor. Mm -hmm. That's it. Transgression of God's law. Mm -hmm. That's the motto of every Christian. Amen. That's, that's, right. that's the attitude that we should have, you know, yeah. like Ridiculous. Martin Luther and those other uh, gentlemen here. Yeah. Here's uh, what this this says here. Now, this is from Charisma News, and this is speaking about the pole dancer, mm -hmm. the male, Alex Magala. Yeah, so he, he came out, and he also had a statement there as well, right? Um, and Magala was, based on his performance, based on his performance. So people are saying this, you know, this performance was sexualizing, and it was uncalled for, and all this and that. Notice what he says here in regards to that, mm -hmm. right? He says... Um, in a statement, Magala, the pole dancer, says his performance was part of an ancient tradition and was not to be taken as a sexually charged act. Again, very ignorant, right? My performance, which some has controversially likened to inappropriate entertainment, is deeply rooted in a historical and cultural tradition that dates back over 1,200 years and has since become a respected discipline showcasing human strength and agility. agility. And it goes on to say that this gentleman here was on America's Got Talent, and also worked as a pole dancer, mm -hmm. right? I mean, again, very ignorant. Again, again, we're not blaming the pole dancer. He was simply invited to do what he was paid to do. The issue is not with the pole dancer, right? The issue is with, again, those who allowed this to happen. And again, the end result, what's going to happen on the souls. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if, if, he, if he is, as he says he is, someone who has faith, mm -hmm. then he should have also known that, hey, why would I be doing this at a Christian oh, event? Off my, my shirt. But sadly, many of these uh, mega church pastors and leaders, they're okay with bringing in all of these types of gimmicks into the church. So, uh -huh. you know. Brethren, put that back on the screen. That second paragraph, right? It says that what he does, the poor dancer, correct, he should not be blamed. He's in his sphere. He was brought in. Uh -huh. We get that. Listen to this. He says, what he does is deeply rooted in what? Con well, historical, historical and, tradition, and tradition, that tradition. dates back what now? 1,200 1, years. years. And has since become a respected discipline showcasing what? Human strength and agility. And agility. Hold on. This conference is called what? Um, Stronger Men's, men's Conference. Correct. Yeah. Why could there not be an opening act dealing with the man who was the strongest man in the Bible outside of Christ? Mm-hmm. Samson, mm -hmm. what was the secret of Samson's strength? His, his obedience. His face, faithfulness. Why we couldn't talk about that? Mm -hmm. Why they couldn't address Samson in the opening act? Why not? It's stronger mm -hmm. men's conference, right? What about Samson? And then show the contrast. Mm -hmm. How he became weak. The weakest, one of the weakest men. What led to that? Yeah, his disobedience. disobedience. That's right. <laughs> Right, him straying away from And that. theatrics. Theatrics. Yeah. Because was he not playing around with Delilah? Oh, yeah. yeah. He was jumping through hoops and theatrics. all that stuff. Theatrics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of that. All of that. If yeah. you tie me this way, mm -hmm. Samson, mm -hmm. the Philistines they're are upon the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not more. Theatrics. Correct. Correct. Playing games. What a juxtaposition. The yeah. irony of it. Mm -hmm. Want to speak about David. Correct. Samson used his bare hands to kill a lion. Mm -hmm. David did the same. Mm-hmm. Lions, yeah, right. 
I used my hands and grabbed the lion's By beard, the beard. And smote him. And <laughs> smote him mm -hmm. and rescued a lamb. How That's close right. do you have to be to grab him by the beard? Mm -hmm. So why could they not speak about Samson and David? Right. And what was the secret of David's strength? Same thing. The as anointing. Mm -hmm. The anointing from Samuel upon him. Yep. God's Holy Spirit. Yep. That should have been the opening act. Mm -hmm. Not yep. talking about a pole dancer. Right. Now, his history goes back to Jezebel. Yep. It goes back to uh, the prophets of Molech. Mm -hmm. yep. Because Dancing. remember, remember, they had high places. High yeah. places. Poor dancers, they go up high. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, Solomon, he married these wives. That's right. Mm -hmm. They are temples and, and they had the high, high places. places. Groves. Yep. That's right. The groves. That's right. Goes, Sodomy. Right. Licentiousness. They are worship. That's where that came from. False worship. And notice that in his statement, it says nothing about it's a historical Biblical. Uh, religious Correct. or biblical tradition. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And in the Bible, it speaks about sorcery, so, yeah. necromancers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What is putting a sword down your throat? What is that? That's, that's magic. magic. Yeah, that's sorcery. Sorcery. Wizardry. Yeah, that's all of that. All of that's that. what that is. That's all of that. Mm -hmm. So they're mixing Christ with paganism mm -hmm. and witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But Watch this. Oh, preacher. No, gonna go. Preacher. Go on. Go on. Make it plain. Go I mean, on. you guys were on fire all this time. Go, go, on, fire now. go on. Come on. Go on. Do you realize Look. <laughs> the, the, the deception here? Because now they are apologizing, right? Yes, sir. After the fact. Oh, man. John Lindale was actually exalted. Mm. Yes. Because now, as yes. long as he looks good in the eyes, eyes of the people, of the followers, they will continue to support him. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's blind, mm -hmm. a blind leader. Yeah. Let's come to our churches. Uh -huh. mm. they don't want to when they try to silence us and the true protest, the leaders in the administration, GC, I won't go in depth, mm -hmm. GC leaders, as long as these so-called men say, let's silence the protesters, the GC leaders are strengthened. Because now they can continue, continue the, the abominations, abominations in the that, church. That's mm. right. That's right. Dangerous. That's right. Mm. That's right. That's right. Hey, we can only we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So even as much as they try to silence the truth, the truth will still progress. They still continue to go on. But what was interesting is that, as you mentioned, the high places and the poll, Mark, um, Mark, 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 mm -hmm. in his opening Bruce dialogue, said he also said that the stage was a high place. Correct. Mm -hmm. So he understands Correct. the spirit mm -hmm. of Jezebel as well as the high places. Correct. So and he may have well made those connections, but you see what he did? He silenced the voice of pro That's so dangerous as a leader. So mm -hmm. dangerous as a leader. Correct. Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? He More asked Peter. These. More than these. Mm. Go feed my sheep. Correct. My goodness. And, and, and so if they Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, if they, if they come over here, and we are the same way. What will the men of Babylon think? But I left Babylon and I can't tell the difference. Correct. Mm -hmm. The only difference is a day. It's a day. And the name on the building. Right. But the worship style is the same. Travis. So, the, the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that I, I believe the only apologizing we should be doing in a situation like this is what Peter did, as you were mentioning there mm -hmm. in John 20. Yeah. Christ is asking him, lovest thou these? Love thou me more Love than these. me more than these. Correct. Yeah. And three times, yeah. He asked Peter this, and Peter got frustrated. And in a sense, we could look at that as a scene of uh, apology, even reconciliation between uh -huh. Jesus and and Peter, uh -huh. for Peter's lack of standing up for God's truth, uh -huh. his lack of standing firm for God when he was questioned, when the fingers were pointed at Peter, That's right. and Peter recanted. So I believe that is the, the kind of scene all of us should have because at some point or another, we all have been unfaithful in our relationship with God, even standing up for the truth. But God is calling us to have this Peter experience to make amends with Christ and now go forward mm -hmm. and present this truth that's unapologetically. It. Yeah, I mean, that's so, true. that's so true. You got one more? Go ahead. No. Listen, let's bring our minds back to Exodus 32. What were the people down there worshiping? Golden a calves. golden calf. False, false worship. How did they look? Naked. What now? Mm. Naked. naked. Because Aaron made them naked to their shame. Verse mm. 25. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what did Moses come down and do? Mm. He, came, he came and checked the apostasy. That's he said, right. Wait a minute now. What's going on here? Aaron? He threw down tables of stones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he not? Yeah. 
He ground that molten calf to powder, made mm -hmm. him drink it. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Nakedness in the camp. Mm -hmm. Moses. Yep. And he was willing to go and pray for the people. Yes. And when he confronted Aaron, what did Aaron say? Blame the people. Blame the people. Yeah, I, I threw like, it in no and it response, came out. No responsibility. I threw a lie. It was a, the, peop, the people Deception. made it. Deception. The people did it. Deception. <laughs> The, they wanted it. The people yeah. did it. They wanted to do it. Mercy. Blaming the people. Aaron. Mm. Did Moses sit with Aaron and apologize? Mm. Mm. Huh? Mm. Moses rebuked Aaron. Huh? But who was high priest? Well, that was Aaron. Aaron. He, he was the leader while Moses was away. Who called the conference? Well, it was Aaron. Aaron, at that Aaron time. called the conference. He called the yes. conference. He, he, set, he set up the opening act. Mercy. That's it. That was the opening act. Yeah. Right? He said that was opening act. He called the pole dancers. Women, come on. Hmm. Bring your jewel. Go ahead. And the reason why we roll out these biblical examples, lest people think it's our opinion. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Chapter 15 of Revelation, verse 2 and verse 3 says, mm -hmm. those who are going to be saved, they will sing the song. Of Moses. Moses. And the lamb. And the lamb. Yep. Not the song and of it's, Aaron. It's not a song, verbal song like this. Uh -uh. It's, it's an experience. experience. First Corinthians 14. Verse 15, mm -hmm. those who sing with the Spirit will sing, sing the with the understanding. It's right. an experience. God needs some Moses that will check the apostasies and be willing to die for the people. Yes. Pray, for them, yeah. Pray, Lord, take my life. Blot me out, but save them, mm -hmm. those who repent. You see this? That's the Spirit we need. You see the balance there? That's it. You see the balance? But then they call us out when we do the same thing. What's the difference? They would have crucified Mo Moses as well. Correct. Oh yeah, correct. Because well, it's, that's the same thing that we are called to do. We're supposed to call. We're called to check the apostasy, but also pray for the people. Pray for me, them. Give me Acts seventeen. Let's transition here. Pray for Acts them. Acts seventeen. If, friends, if we were to stop this right here, I believe it would be a slight disservice. We would have missed an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We we would have been remiss in not addressing what we are now about to speak about. Now, it's not accidental that Mark Driscoll mm -hmm. had a church by the name of Mars Hill, Mars Hill yeah. Church, mega church, 15,000 people, different campuses. Mm -hmm. In Acts 17, we see Paul addressing the men mm -hmm. and leaders of Mars Hill. Mm -hmm. Let's focus right here on verse number 21. 21. Do you have it there, preacher? Yeah. yeah. Verse 21. Go ahead, Jay. It says, for all the Athenians and strangers which were, there, which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and mm -hmm. said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all these things ye are too superstitious. Mm. Now so, notice now mm -hmm. how Paul is speaking to the leaders and preachers of Mars Hill. Mm. And he mentions worship. Mm -hmm. And to point the people to the true God. God of, yes. That's where we're going now. Yes. For Preacher. as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Uh. So now what now? He was going to declare unto them the one who they should mm -hmm. worship mm -hmm. and what true worship is. Mm -hmm. God that what now? Made. Look at verse 24. God that made the world. Mm -hmm, the creator. So now why do we worship? Because he mm. made the world. He's the creator. Creator. Yep. Yep. Creator. Yep. And on what day should we worship God because he's creator? On the seventh day of the, the week. Yep. The day that the he said as a Sunday. memorial. Nope. Nope. The first day of the week. Nope. The seventh day. If it's day. creation, it reminds us of the creation week. And how, what was the creation? Well, how did God end the creation week? Greg, you can't mm. worship on Sunday in memorial of creation because that was no. the first, first day, day of, of the creation. Week. Yeah, that's the point. You Brethren. have to worship on the seventh. Wonderful. So we must now give the listeners and the viewers spiritual ammunitions to address this controversy right here. Uh -huh. Give it to us. Yep. Notice, notice here, friends. The same Mark Driscoll. Mark Driscoll on seven reasons we Sabbath. Seven ways we kill it. Notice what it says here. He says he dealt with two questions the commandment raises. One, is Sabbath, is Saturday or Sunday the Sabbath? That's the question he asked. It was Saturday, he says. It was Saturday, he says. As the Bible says, the seventh day, he said. But is it okay to celebrate the Sabbath on a Sunday? Next. Mark Driscoll, again, headline. 
Same headline. But what does he say next? He, go on, he, he goes on to say, everything changed when Jesus came. Hmm. Was really, really, is that true? Hmm. Not just with the Sabbath, the pastor stressed. Jesus observed Sabbath on Saturday. He pointed out, but he died and then rose on Sunday. Hmm. Okay. The early church started meeting not what on What scripture now is he going to use mm -hmm. to now justify Sunday, Sunday worship? worship? Notice here, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. The early church started to meet on Saturday, not on, but on, not on Saturday, but on Sunday. On the first day of the week when we were together. For Jews, Sunday is the first day. Mm -hmm. Now, not only for Jews, for all <laughs> mankind, Sunday right. is the first day. Right. I don't Be know why he's just mentioning the Jews. Mm -hmm. And why do we say Sunday is the first day? Because God said it's the first day. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. So what he's suggesting here is Acts 20 verse 7 proves that we should now worship on Sunday. Let's right. read that here. Oh, it Lord. says, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, uh -huh. and continued his speech until, until midnight. midnight. Let's give you two points here to answer this so that you can know how to answer this question if it's brought up. Does the fact that the disciples and the apostles were worshiping, or, or excuse me, not worshiping, but the fact that they came together on the first day of the week mean that it was now the Sabbath? No. Why? When you compare it with Acts 2 and verse 46. They came to do what? Eat, break bread. break bread. That's it. Break Emphasize. Bread. Okay, break so bread. that's the key. They came to break, break bread. bread. Mm -hmm. Now notice Acts 2 verse 46. Mm -hmm. Let's count the words carefully. And they continuing daily. Mm -hmm. What See? does daily mean? That means every day. Saturday? Every day. Not, um, it, uh, Friday? Sunday? Pause, yeah, Mon every day, right? You're right. Daily. Yeah. Daily with one another in the temple and mm -hmm. breaking bread yeah. from house to house. That's it did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Uh, so we cannot say that in Acts 20, verse 7, the fact that they came together on the first day of the week meant it was a Sabbath. Uh -huh. If that's the case, any day could be a Sabbath. Every now. day is a Sabbath then, if that's the, if that's the argument. Because it, they brought bread every day. Every day. So, so, so basically, pick your Sabbath. Correct. <laughs> pick it. We're... we're as SDAs, we told that in, in one of our meetings. That's right. We, recently, had, a, we, had, we had a music a Sunday a, a music, person. We had a music concert recently yes. at, our, at, our, at our school. Correct. And invited a Sunday singer to come. And he told that crowd, pick your Sabbath. Pick your Sabbath. If it's Monday, keep it. Hmm. Because we're talking about reaching folks who belong to these mega churches. That's right. Since the pastor of a 15,000 congregation hmm. is saying, we on a Sunday as a Sabbath because Acts 20 verse 7 they came together yeah, to, to break, break bread, bread on the first day. That means that's the Sabbath. Mm. Well, they broke bread every day. That's right. So is every day the Sabbath? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what does the, the other verse say it's, in Acts 20? That uh, further confirms Sunday was not the Sabbath, the first day of the week. That's right. In the same verse, verse seven, 7, it says that uh, Paul continued his speech until midnight. Now, the Bible is clear when a day begins. Mm -hmm. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, you read time and time again, yep. I believe verse five, 5, and it just, the whole chapter, it says evening, evening and, morning. and morning were the, the first, first day, day, the second day, the third day. Clear. So when does a day begin in Scripture? Mm -hmm. In the evening. Evening time. Thus, they came together in the evening, which would be Saturday yep. night, Sabbath. Mm -hmm. right? Saturday night, and he continued his speech until midnight. midnight. That's right. Verse right. 8 now says that there were many lights in the upper chamber evening where time. they were gathered together. So mm -hmm. this was an evening meeting. That's no right. wonder they were lights because yeah. the sun was down. It That's was right. dark. Emphasis. Right. It was a Sabbath, Sabbath. meeting, Sabbath meeting. That's that right. ran all the way into the evening Sunday. to midnight. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Paul was going to depart the next day. Being Correct. In Sunday. verse 11 now. Verse mm -hmm. 11. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, mm -hmm. so he departed. Break of day. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, that's Correct. it. Break of day, he left. That's so clear. So there it is. That's clear. So Can't we need that. the spiritual ammunition to reach these people. Mm -hmm. Next one here. Yeah. Can't use Acts 20, verse 7. Sorry. No. Sorry. Is that it? It's, yes. All right. It's more important that we get a day than argue over which day it is. Mm. While the Sabbath is not binding on us, but it is good wisdom. Mm. I think with the law being fulfilled in Christ and nine out of the 10 commandments still binding upon us today. Why nine? <laughs> that makes no, I believe this is the one, the Sabbath, that shifts from the category of the law to the category of wisdom. Driscoll added, you don't have to get a day off, but if you don't, you will hurt yourself. 
Mercy. So he said when Christ came on the scene, only nine, basically, only nine commandments we had to keep because, today. <laughs> because only nine commands we, we keep today because Sabbath has been changed to, to now Sunday. We now worship on Sunday. So now the Sabbath is now Sunday. Mm. And we only can we only have to keep nine. Does that make any sense to you? Mm. So why that one is the only is one the, that what, was changed? Why is the only controverted one? And, and the only one dropped. So now that means he only speak about nine commandments. And it's the only one that God says to remember. So so how fitting would it be for the devil to have a controversy with the fourth commandment? Correct. The one that God says to remember. Right. Because if I'm correct, which I am correct according to the Bible. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus tells us, us preach. what will happen. He says there's nine commandments. Uh, well, let's see what Jesus says. Mm -hmm. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Right. That's right. And, and when you look at Mark chapter 2, verse 27, mm -hmm. the Bible says that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And again, Mark is writing this after the cross. Mm -hmm. So if Mark is quoting from Christ, why would Christ mean those words only up until the cross? Mm -hmm. It would make no sense. Christ is saying the Sabbath was made for man, and this, and so how, how, Lord have mercy. <laughs> if the Sabbath was made for man only up until the cross, that means Christ's death on the cross was simply just something that's temporary. Right? Does that make sense? That this, am, I, <laughs> am I making sense? Go again. Here? Go again. Okay, let me go again. So, he, so Christ says in, Mar, in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, the mm -hmm. Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So if Mark, if Mark felt no need to qualify his words up until the cross, that means that Christ's words were simply just um, temporary, that the, that the Sabbath was not made for man only up until the, the cross. Got you. That means after the cross now, he's, it's, not, it's, Lord it's not, he's not Lord of the Sabbath anymore. Okay. Because Mark chapter 2, verses 27, 28, gotcha. is contextually about God's Sabbath. Correct. Amen? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, no, just uh, another one I'm looking for Amen. here in Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it also shows you that Christ reminded his disciples 40 years after his death on the cross mm -hmm. to remember the Sabbath. Because mm -hmm. he says, right. pray that your flight be not in winter or on the Sabbath day. So right there, he's reminding you after the cross to yeah, keep, keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Correct. Yep. Let's give those uh, specific scriptures. Correct. Matthew 24, mm -hmm. verse 3, because mm -hmm. verse 3 is key. All right. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's verse 3. Then verse 14, mm -hmm. everlasting gospel to all the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. Then yep. verse 20, it's in verse 20. Verse 20. Pray that your flight be not in the be not. Yep. In the winter, Sabbath. nor on the Sabbath day. So it's talking about Sabbath keeping just before the second coming of Christ. That's right. After now, are you finished? Done. Okay. So now we want to give some more ammunitions. Mm -hmm. As it relates to the commandments in the last days, most of those texts that we read came from Matthew, Mark, Mark and Matthew again. Matthew 5, Matthew Mark. 24, and Mark 2. That's right. Mm -hmm. People are going to say those scriptures are in in the New, Gospels, New right? So we want to find scriptures now that point to Sabbath keeping in the New Testament, but outside of the Gospels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew 24 is key. There's no way you can refute that mm -hmm. last days. So now what other texts could we give that speak about Sabbath keeping, uh, commandment keeping, after the cross, mm -hmm. outside of Matthew, right. Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you, same book of Acts, Acts 13, verse 42. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, mm -hmm. who came in now? The Gentiles besought these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Then verse 44, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of the Lord. Wonderful. Yeah, so yeah, for Acts Jew 13, and Acts Gentile. 13, I think Acts 16 Acts 17 mm -hmm. and Acts 18 as well, right? right? Yes. It's there. Acts 18, 1 through 4, one Acts four. 17, 1 through 4, mm -hmm. and Acts 16, about verse 13, somewhere inside there. That's yes. right. I also like Revelation chapter 14. Now watch this one now. All right. Go ahead. Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having right. the everlasting gospel mm -hmm. to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So this message must go to every person on the earth. Correct. Mm -hmm saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. 
for the hour of his judgment is come. And watch the next few words. Worship him. It points us now back to the creator that made mm -hmm. heaven, earth, sea, and the fountains of water. So this message in the last days must be given to every person living under world and in the earth. And it points them back to the creation, Genesis 1, 1 through Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And where do we find in that creation sequence? We find the Sabbath, Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3 as well. God rested from his work on the Sabbath day. That's the seventh day of the week. And so we see it right here. We see it right in the last message in mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. May I augment it? Go ahead. So this is the everlasting gospel, verse mm -hmm. 6. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, worship him that made. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Everlasting gospel. Mm. Sometimes we read the verses, but we don't emphasize the word or the phrase that makes it clear. Yes. Everlasting gospel. Forever. Mark Driscoll. Mm -hmm. Everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. Those in your churches. Everlasting gospel. Right? Worship God who made. Mm -hmm. So why do we worship him? He's maker. Mm -hmm. Exodus 20. Mm -hmm. Verse 8 through verse 11. Yes. That is the seventh day Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So here we have Sabbath keeping. Mm -hmm. It's not changed, Mark no. Driscoll. No. no. You see it now? Mm -mm. And, it, and it uses, it even borrows almost exactly, not exactly, but almost exactly from the ten or the fourth commandment in Exodus 20, verse, verse 11. 11. Verse 11. Verse 11. Right. It's right there. Creator. So we are showing him it is still binding. Mm -hmm. No way around it. Yep. Make sense yep. now? Yep. So when we go to verse 12 of chapter 14 now, where it says, mm -hmm. Bec and this is why this point is so important. Mm -hmm. Imagine we say, here are some scriptures that say in the last days we must obey God's commandments. Mm -hmm. Mark Driscoll will retort by saying, yes, it's his commandments, but it's nine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. See, yep, it's right, nine. Right. Yeah. So look at chapter 14, verse 12 of Revelation now. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Commandments. Are these nine? Mm -mm. Right? All ten. Excluding the Sabbath? No, because verse seven, seven. says, yes, right. Worship Fifth him year. because he made, he made his creator. He didn't just make Exodus nine. Exodus 20. Verse 8 through verse 11. Mm -hmm. Genesis 2, verse 2 through verse 3. That's right. Right. And why do we worship God? Psalm 95, verse 6. Mm -hmm. He's, he's creator. creator. He's yep. maker. Yep. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4 of Revelation, mm -hmm. verse 10 and verse 11. The people, the angels rather in heaven, they worship, worship him, him because he is creator. That's right. The Sabbath seventh day is given as a memorial mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. creation, not the first day of the week. Mark Driscoll mm -hmm. and Mem John Lindale that's right. and all of your followers. That's why if we don't uh, uh, correct this misnomer, this false teaching, it would have been a disservice to God. Mm -hmm. and I need one more scripture. Well, I got one. Who has it? Hebrews 4. All right, there it is. I love this one. Hebrews 4, verse 4 says, For he spake in a certain place mm -hmm. of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Uh -huh. Skip on down to verse eight. Uh -huh. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Right. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. So uh -huh. in, in essence, Hebrews 4 reminds us of the Sabbath day and says that if Jesus would have given us another day, he would have spoken about it. Explicitly. Therefore, there's no change. It remains a day of rest right. for the people of God, the seventh day Sabbath. And, and in verse four, you began in verse four? Yep. Uh -huh. It points us back to where? The, the foundation, creation. the creation of the world, world. Always right? Us back. right? Back yeah. to creation. Let's but don't stop there. What about verse, verse, verse nine, nine. 10, 11? Mm -hmm. Nine, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That's right. For he that entereth into his rest, mm -hmm. he also, also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. When was that? Sunday. Creation. When was that? The first day of the week. When was that? Seventh day Sabbath. Mm. Commonly called Saturday. As he did. Comparative. Correct. Verse, verse 11. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the example of unbelief. unbelief. Come on now. Unbelief. Come on, Driscoll. Come and on many now. people Get these are in that state of unbelief, some unknowingly, others willfully, yeah. on this point of the Sabbath. Right. Unbelief that the seventh day is still the Sabbath of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Unbelief that we have to keep all Ten Commandments, including the 
a seven day Sabbath. That's right. But they say, you're, why do you always emphasize the Sabbath? Why? It's the one that's forgotten. It's, it's the, the one that's the one that says for remember. I mean, if they are saying that there's only nine that we have to keep, well, we have to emphasize the one that has to be kept. As Seventh day Adventists, we teach and believe in keeping all Ten Commandments. That's true. But why again? God says to remember, and that's the one that the controversy is over. That's true. Why should we emphasize that fourth one? I mean, we could, I could, I have more reasons, but you yeah, tell mean, us. We'll, Give, we'll we be here read, all we day. Can't, we can't read, read your mind, man. Give <laughs> us one more. I mean, <laughs> in the last days, as we see this uh, controversy in Revelation chapter 13, and even chapter 14 as well, the controversy over the mark of the beast is over worship. That's it right there. And on which day does God say to worship? The seventh day Sabbath. Right. So it makes sense why there's a worship. controversy over that, worship. why Satan is saying you don't have to keep the Sabbath. Worship. Because when now there is a law in place by law, starting here in America and then around the world, that you must mm -hmm. worship falsely on Sunday as the Sabbath. Right. If you're unaware of the issue, you will say, well, I do that anyway. Yeah. But it's false according to Scripture. That's right. And it's a great controversy between Christ and Satan. Mm -hmm. Chapter 12 of Revelation, verse 7 through verse 9. The war. The Amen. war. Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through verse 14. Why Satan fell. Mm -hmm. Last scripture. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through verse 10. Mm -hmm. What did Satan say to Christ? All these, All these things will I give unto you. Well Finish down. it. If you well bow down and, and worship, me. worship me. That's why we emphasize the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Because the issue in the controversy between Christ and Satan is over worship. Right. It, it, it's worship. And what did Christ say in response to Satan in Matthew 4, verse 10 now? Yeah. Thou shalt worship, worship the Lord thy, thy God. God. Him only. Him only shalt thou, thou serve. Thou. In other words, worship me because I am your God. I'm the one who created, created. you. Right. That's yeah. one attribute that makes God God, his creator. Mm -hmm. That's what makes God God, mm -hmm. his creator. That's right. One off. That's right. Creation. That's right. And that's why we worship him as creator. Yeah, yeah. And he did not give us the first day of the week mm -hmm. as a day of rest. It's a working day. That's right. That's right. It's a day as a memorial when he rested. I am creator. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and again, that, that, that Sabbath is a special day with God. Because someone may retort and say, oh, well, I worship God every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. But it's a special day God particularly set aside Correct. that we are to set aside our worldly things because on those days are we not working and carrying on and doing types right. of things yeah we're still worshiping god but on that sabbath day is a day different that god blessed sanctified and made holy friends and as he blessed and sanctified it he wants to do the same to us amen I I'm going to give you a chance to do closing comments before I close. Exactly. I know we got to get this guy. We got to get him. Man. When you start, when you start to close, hey, well, I'm not done yet. Yeah. I'm so, not, I'm so not, I'm not, this is your I'm chance. Yes. It's just, let's leave the floor open. Put aside our mics right now. And anything say, else, hey, Andrew? Andrew, what else you have? You may proceed <laughs> and close. We'll see what happens. You Friends. You're going to sink you, brother. <laughs> thank you for joining us for this uh, lovely episode of Make It Plain. We, we had fun, as you can see. Amen. Um, but I pray that you were blessed as well as we analyze this current event. And I pray that you take away some nuggets to apply to your life. If you are a presently a Sunday keeper, God does not hold you in, in contempt. You are not condemned. It's when we hold on to error that God brings condemnation. So God is just calling us to repentance. We love you all. Don't forget to like and share this video and continue to stay abreast of the work that we're doing uh, here on Save to Serve so that you can see the latest podcast so that you also can get some more gems of Bible truth. Follow us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. All the links are in the description box below. We'll see you next time.